You're listening to the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks. Hi, I'm Dr. Brenna Hicks, the Kid Counselor. This is the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast where I give you insight, awareness, and enlightenment about your parenting and your relationship with your kids. In today's episode, we are talking about screens, one of my favorite topics, but specifically an encouragement to not give in. And I'm going to share a little story from yesterday with all of you. Our family went on a little day outing, and I just couldn't help but bring this into the podcast. So we're going to talk about screens, and specifically, I want to share this story of what happened at the bowling alley, but then I want to dive into the behavior and what happens when kids are on screens too often, and specifically what happens when behavior takes place that we are not in favor of, we're not supportive of, and then children are given screens after the fact. So we're going to look at that dynamic because I think sometimes we inadvertently reinforce negative behavior. And then finally, I want to talk about the addictive nature of screens and what is going on there and just kind of the neurobiology a little bit behind that. So you get a, a little pep talk today. You know how passionate I am about screens and how damaging they can be and how it really needs to be regulated and closely controlled. So don't give in to screens. That's your pep talk for the week. <laughs> the path to calm, confident, and in control parenting starts now. All right. So we went bowling yesterday, and this is a related aside. If you all are not aware of the Kids Bowl Free Program, you should very much check it out. You have to find a participating alley in your area, but it's kidsbowlfree.com, and children under 18 can bowl two free games of bowling all weekdays all summer long. And it runs, like I want to say, May through October, so it's actually longer than the full summer. And all you have to pay for is shoes. And then they usually do shoe passes and family passes. And so it's an absolutely fantastic deal. We live in super hot Florida, so it's indoors, it's air conditioning. It's so lovely to be able to go for a couple hours and bowl as a family. We all love bowling. We all have our own balls. Of course, I have a Tampa Bay Rays ball. And it's just fun for us to go do that together. So there's your little tip for the week. Check out the Kids Bowl free program and your kids can bowl two games all summer long for free. But that said, we are Kids Bowl freeing yesterday and there's a family next to us and there were three children and three adults. So I don't know what the configuration of who was with who, but three kids, probably all under the age of five and then three adults. And we were walking from getting our lane set up, walking down toward the lane that we were assigned to. And the little boy, he was probably two and a half, was in the arcade. And the dad went to get him and said, come on, we need to go back over here. And the little boy didn't want to leave the arcade. So dad tried to grab his hand and he immediately starts like, you know, like drop what did they call that? Like dead falling or like drop falling where you just like all your body weight just gets limp and you just drop to the floor. So he refuses to hold his dad's hand. So his dad picks him up. And so we're actually walking parallel at this point. Dad's holding toddler who is kicking, flailing, screaming, hitting. I mean, I don't know how he, the dad didn't drop him. He was a wiggle worm. And so he's vehemently fighting, getting picked up and getting carried back to the lane. So we're walking toward the lanes together and it ends up that our lane's right next to theirs. So he's screaming and pitching a fit and they're trying to get him to calm down and they're trying to tell him to stop and he's just really upset. And so they sit him in the chair, which he does not want to stay in. And the only way they could get him to comply was to put him in front of an iPad. So they grab the iPad, they turn it on, they sit it on the counter. It was an instantaneous change. He's calm, he's quiet, he's happy, he's not angry, he's not crying, he's not fighting, he's just sitting there staring at the screen. And I just can't take it, y'all. I it it it's everything in me to not walk over and rip the iPad away from the kid and say, "Do you understand what you're doing to your child who's two and a half?" who is now staring at a screen when he was literally just pitching a fit a second ago. And the, 
the assumption I made is that that was the only thing that they knew to do to get him to sit and let them bowl because he was too young to bowl. And so I think it was a digital pacifier, as I like to call it. So that's the story, right? So that's what brings us to why we're chatting today about screens. So here's what's happening. So I want to talk a little bit about the behavior side of this, because what I'm sure they don't know they're doing, and I'm sure they're not even aware is happening. He's pitching a royal fit. He's completely dysregulated. He's completely out of control. He's flailing. He's screaming. He's hitting. He's kicking. He's causing a scene, having a meltdown, whatever you care to term it, tantrum, meltdown, I don't know. But he's in this moment where he completely cannot control his behavior. And they give him an iPad. Now, I understand from an adult, rational, cognitive perspective, the thought process was likely, if we give him an iPad, he'll stop. Okay, so I understand that from the adult side. But from the child side, this two-and-a-half-year-old little boy, he is reinforced for pitching a fit. He was just shown, if you completely lose control, you completely dysregulate, and you come unhinged, you'll get to have the iPad because that will calm you down. So they are essentially reinforcing behavior that they don't want, and they're conditioning him to melt down to get the iPad. So at a later date in this bowling alley exchange, he is getting up out of the chair and trying to walk around again, and they keep telling him no. So then they hand him the phone. So then he has the iPad and the phone, both set up with the little you know, stands so that they'll sit on the table. So he has an iPad perched and a phone perched, both next to each other on the table. So that kept him occupied for a while. Well, then he gets up and tries to walk away again, and they catch him running off. So mom spanks him. He starts crying. She says, now you actually have something to cry about. And then she takes the phone away from him and goes, now you don't get this. So he starts screaming all over again, and dad walks up and goes, just use the iPad, and gives him the iPad, which hadn't been taken away. So here's round two of you get completely dysregulated, you tantrum, you melt down, and you'll get to have a screen. And look, this is not a judgment on them. This is not an accusation on them. I know that parents are always doing the best that they can, okay? So I want to make it very clear. When I share stories, I never have a negative tone. I never have an accusation. This is just my observation of what's going on in an alley to serve as an illustration so that we can safeguard against it, right? Because I look at everything from a therapeutic lens. I look at everything from a child development lens. And because of the book that I've written and because of all the research I've done about how dangerous screens are, this is a personal bent that I have against giving kids screens, especially in circumstances like this, when it's just making things worse. So please know none of this is said judgmentally or accusationally. They were trying their best and they just wanted to have a nice afternoon at the bowling alley and they didn't want to deal with their two and a half year old that didn't want to sit still. I completely get it. But here's where I'm going with this. We cannot inadvertently reward the behavior that we don't want by giving them a screen to stop the behavior because that is exactly what we're doing. We're saying, lose your mind, get rewarded with a screen. Start screaming in the alley, you get the iPad. So we have to be really careful of when we give screens and it has to be intentional and it has to be purposeful and it has to be planned because that is the only way we can ensure that they're not conditioned that if I act a certain way, I get to have the iPad or the phone or the tablet or whatever it happens to be. Okay. So then finally, I want to dive in a little bit because I know no one likes science except maybe the science people out there, (laughs) but you know, neurobiology is not necessarily the favorite topic. I get it. But we have to understand the addiction piece of screen time in kids. And when we look at the receptors in the brain, when children are in front of screens and they are using screens, especially for long periods of time, the dopamine receptors are firing. What is dopamine, you might ask? Some of you probably are like, of course I know what dopamine is. But for those of you that don't, 
Dopamine is the feel-good hormone. It's the pleasure center of the brain, which is exactly the same thing that turns on when drugs and alcohol and nicotine are used. So why do people become addicted to vices? Because it triggers the dopamine center in the brain. Why do children become addicted to screens? Because it triggers the dopamine receptors in the brain. So we cannot look at this merely as a parenting issue. We have to look at this as a brain issue. So yes, it's good advice to not let your child be on screens too often. But that is only scratching the surface of what's going on. Children become addicted to screens. They literally cannot live without them. They cannot function without them. It is a truly addictive type of issue. So we have dopamine receptors firing. We get rushes of adrenaline. And if you're familiar with my book, sorry, I keep bringing it up, but I think every parent needs to own my book, not because I make money on it, but because you have to know what's going on and the importance of safeguarding it for your family. The adrenaline that comes, the addiction that comes, the dopamine that comes, this, the games are designed to keep you coming back for more and to intentionally make them addictive. A portion of my book goes into what's going on with these game development centers. So they're bringing in neuropsychologists and neurobiologists and psychiatrists and all of these people that deeply understand the way the brain works. And they're purposefully putting addictive pieces in games to keep you hooked and to keep you coming back. This daily reward nonsense, every hour you get a new life, you have to log back in to get your special spin. You have to get your daily reward. You have to get your whatever... It's just to make them addictive. So y'all, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but I have new listeners all the time, right? So if you're new to the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast family, first of all, welcome. Second of all, you have to understand the depth of what's going on here. This is so big of a battle. This is a war that we are having to fight on behalf of our kids because the social media gurus and the gaming gurus and the technology gurus are purposefully trying to get our kids addicted to devices. And if we don't stop it, no one is going to. So when we're looking at the addictive piece of screens, the more we give our kids screen time, the more likely they are to get addicted. And in my book, I talk about these treatment centers that are popping up literally all over the world inpatient treatment centers for children who are having to detox from their addiction to screens. They're not allowed to have any devices, any technology for one to three months, depending on the severity of the addiction. This is major. So as we're flippantly giving our kids screens to pacify them, to keep them quiet at a restaurant, to help them not lose their mind in a bowling alley, we're feeding the addiction. And y'all, I see it firsthand. I see it at my center. I see it with our own son. Our own son does not get screens during the week. He gets two hours on Saturday, two hours on Sunday. That is all he gets all week long, four hours total. Sometimes he gets a little bit of time on Friday. That's an if. So four to five hours for the entire week. That includes all screens, by the way, because I get the question, well, that's just like video games, right? Right. No, that's TV, video games, f anything related to a screen. It's five hours in the entire week. Why? Because we've watched our son get too interested in screens if we let him have more than that. Now, you need to decide for your own family and for your own kids. I'm not saying that five hours is a magic number. That's just the, the time that works for our family. Some kids can handle more and they don't get addicted to it. A lot of it is the child's personality. A lot of it is the child's interest level in, in video games and in screens. So it is a personal decision. Our decision for our family has been five hours. But you have to keep in mind, I've watched it. I watch kids at my office come in, and they come in for their play session, and they say, I'm so bored, which is strange because they're in charge in the playroom, and I literally have an entire playroom full of toys. And when I when I inquire about that. Sometimes I'll say, oh my goodness, I wonder why you're bored when you have all these things to play with. Because I really just want to be home on my iPad. Oh, okay. So that's what it is. You're not bored. You just are addicted to screens. And our son, it's the same way. It's when he knows his screen time is coming up. Can I play? 
Am I going to be able to play? Or what are we doing tomorrow? We're not going anywhere in the morning, right? And there's this need to be on the screen. Now, when I know that it's only four hours a week, that doesn't concern me. And he knows that he doesn't get more than that, so he doesn't ask. But we have to be very purposeful and intentional about having a system so that it's not decided on the fly. And we have to know what we're willing to let our children have and make sure that we're operating within those boundaries. So what does that mean for you all? Now that you heard the story, now that I've given you your pep talk and potentially it might have scared some of you that didn't realize the, the importance of keeping kids off screens. Number one, if you have not checked it out already, get my book, Device Detox. It's on Amazon. There's the Kindle version, the print version. Read Device Detox. It'll give you all of this information and more, plus systems to get your kids to a healthy amount of screen time. Do your own research. Look up the dangers of kids and screens. More and more and more books are being written about this. I was just on Amazon the other day, and I could not believe how many books have been written in the last year about how bad screens are for kids. So I'm not the only one talking about this. Go do your own research. Secondly, if you feel like your child has a phone and they're on social media, they're on internet, they're doing things on their phone all day, every day, I have a solution for you. I have an affiliate partnership with Gab Phone. It's G-A-B-B. -B. Some of you that have been with me a while have heard a lot about this. They're running a promo right now. As an affiliate, you get $50 off a phone and you use the promo code PLAY. So G-A-B-B, -B, phone, and you use the word PLAY as the promo code, you get $50 off. It has no internet, no social media, no apps. Completely safe. It will prevent your children from staring at their phone all day long because there's nothing to stare at. Okay? And then beyond that, you have to look at what video games they're playing, what tablet time they're having, what TVs and movies that they're watching. How often are they sitting in front of a screen of any kind? Computers, tablets, iPads, laptops, TV screen, whatever it is. How often each day are they sitting in front of a screen? Is that the amount you want them to be there? And if not, put a system in place to stop it. So that's my pep talk for y'all this week. I know I talk about this periodically. Thank you for those of you that have been with me forever for sticking with this topic. But I can't talk about it enough because I'm on the front line of this every day. I see kids addicted to screens every day at our center. And I see it in bowling alleys and restaurants and everywhere we go. We went to this really cool arcade place it's called Main Event. I don't know if y'all have those where you are, but it's like a Dave and Buster's or Chuck E. Cheese, something like that. So it's all these games. And there were a whole bunch of kids not playing the arcade games, sitting around on the couches, staring at their phones all day that we were there. And I just thought, you're at one of the most fun places on the planet to be a kid. You can do coin pushers, you can do basketball, you can do, you know, throw the ball at the crazy clown and knock them over. Like, there's all these fun arcade games and you're choosing to sit and stare at your phone. This is a tragedy, y'all. We, we should be so worried about this, so concerned about this. And I don't want us 20 years from now to watch that commercial where it says, if you or a loved one in, you know, 2020 had an iPad, an iPhone, whatever, and your kids have all these problems because of it, you know, there's a lawsuit. I, I don't want us to get there. And if we don't stop it, I fear that's where we're going. So check out my book, Device Detox. Check out Gab Phone with two Bs, promo code PLAY, save yourself 50 bucks. It's a safe, kid-friendly phone. You don't have to worry about it. One final thing before I let you go, before we wrap up for today. Last episode, I shared an email that Jacinth sent me and she's in Ohio, and I neglected to mention that I gave her access to my entire online suite of training products as a thank you for writing into me. So she was given access to all six of my online trainings. I've got device detox. I've got love languages. I've got birth order. I've got encouragement. I've got all kinds of stuff in there. So Jacinth, thank you for writing in. And I just got an email today from Emily in Canada about homeschooling. Emily, thank you for reaching out to me. So I'm also giving you access to that training as well. So if you would like to send me an email, share with me what's going on in your life, ask me questions. If I feature you on an episode, I'm happy to share my suite of training products with you as well. 
You can reach me at Brenna at thekidcounselor.com. If you haven't already, go to playtherapyparenting.com slash newsletter, and you can sign up there. My podcast is available. If you've not subscribed, make sure you do that because then you know when I drop another episode. So thank you all so much for being a part of the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast family. We'll talk again soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Play Therapy Parenting Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks. For more episodes and to subscribe to our newsletter, please go to www.playtherapyparenting.com.